On Monday, the 7th of October, 1985, the Achille Lauro, an Italian cruise ship, stopped at the port of Alexandria in Egypt. It was the fifth day of the cruise, which had started from the Italian city of Genoa. The ship had a total of 748 passengers and 450 crew members on board. At Alexandria port, 651 passengers disembarked and boarded buses, heading to Cairo for sightseeing at the pyramids. After their departure, the ship's captain left the port of Alexandria with the remaining 97 passengers, setting the cruise ship's course 225 kilometers west towards the Egyptian port of Said. Here, the tourists returning from Cairo were supposed to rejoin the ship after 14 hours. Everything that happened so far was as planned. However, after this point, things started to go awry. When the tourists returning from Cairo arrived at the port of Said at exactly 10.30 p.m., expecting to rejoin their companions, they found no sign of the Achille Lauro. Initially, they were told that the cruise ship was delayed due to traffic heading to the Suez Canal. However, after waiting for three hours with no sign of the ship, they were informed of the truth. It turned out that the Achille Lauro had been hijacked. Among the remaining 97 passengers, there were four hijackers. They had apparently smuggled their weapons inside a fuel tank, which caused a strong smell in their room. Just after leaving the port of Alexandria, they were in their room, drying their weapons with a hairdryer, when a waiter came in to serve fruits. The door was mistakenly left open. It seems they didn't intend to hijack the ship near the Alexandria port, but since their plan was now exposed, they immediately went to the ship's dining hall and began terrorizing the passengers, taking them hostage. Who these hijackers were and their ultimate purpose was unknown at the time. A hostess asked them who they were, and one of them responded that they were Norwegian nationals. Before the hijackers could reach the ship's radio room, the operator broadcasted an SOS call informing that the Achille Lauro had been hijacked. This message was received by a radio station in Sweden. The hijackers were unaware of this SOS message and seized control of the radio room, shutting down all communication systems on the ship. One hijacker called the ship's captain, Gerardo de Rosa, to the front bridge. Upon his arrival, de Rosa was greeted with gunfire. The hijackers, speaking Arabic and broken English, ordered him to head 500 kilometers towards the Syrian port of Tardis. At this point, Captain de Rosa realized that they were not Norwegian nationals. He was also instructed to ensure that the 450 crew members continued their duties normally but stayed away from the hostages. Under the threat of guns, Captain de Rosa had no choice but to follow the hijackers' orders. The Achille Lauro, instead of heading to the port of Said in Egypt, was now en route to Syria. The frightened hostages and the crew were clueless about what was going to happen next. As the sun set on the 7th of October, the hijackers ordered all hostages to sleep on the ground. Meanwhile, the SOS message received by the Swedish radio station had already caused a stir around the world. The Italian crisis management team was activated since it was their cruise ship, but initially the US didn't take the case seriously. However, once it was known that American nationals were also on the cruise ship, the US crisis management became active. They saw it as a terrorist attack, and the U.S. had a policy of not negotiating with terrorists. But the complication was that the hijacking had now affected three different countries. U.S. passengers were involved, the ship was Italian, and the incident occurred in Egyptian territory. The debate was on which country should take action. The U.S. thought Italy should act first since it was their ship. However, the Italian government preferred negotiations over force not wanting to sour relations with Mediterranean countries. The U.S., on the other hand, wanted to deal with the hijackers sternly. Therefore, they persuaded all Mediterranean coastal countries not to allow the Achille Lauro to dock. By the morning of the 8th of October, the Achille Lauro was near Syria. Captain de Rosa requested permission to dock at the port of Tartus, but since he had already alerted everyone, the Syrian authorities did not respond. The hijackers then began separating the hostages according to their nationalities. It appeared they were looking for Americans and Jews. They segregated 20 passengers, including an elderly couple, Marilyn Klinghoffer, and her 69-year-old wheelchair-bound husband, Leon Klinghoffer. 
The hijackers ordered these 20 people to move to the upper deck, but Leon Klinghoffer couldn't go upstairs. His wife protested at leaving him alone, but the hijackers silenced her with their guns. Leon Klinghoffer was visibly angry and kept verbally abusing the hijackers. For a long time, when the Achille Laura was not granted permission to enter Syria, the hijackers finally laid out their demands via radio to the Syrian authorities. One of the four, who seemed to be their leader, announced on the radio that they were affiliated with the PLF, the Palestine Liberation Front, and demanded that Israel release their 50 comrades. Everything was out in the open now. Those who claimed to be Norwegian were actually Palestinians. The hijacker's name was Yusuf Majed Molki, and he ultimately stated that if their demands were not met by 3 p.m., they would start killing the Jews on board, one by one. The situation became more complicated, directly affecting Syria, Israel, and Palestine. As the hijackers' deadline approached, neither their demands were met, nor did any negotiation team reach the ship. At 3 p.m., they sent a message to the port of Tardis, claiming they had killed an American passenger and were ready to kill another. However, TARDIS officials paid no heed to their threats and instructed them to leave. When the hijackers realized their strategy was not working in Syria, they ordered the captain to head to Cyprus. Meanwhile, the U.S. intelligence network was abuzz with rumors that an American passenger had been killed, but there was no confirmation. Now that the hijackers' identities were known, Italy contacted Palestinian President Yasser Arafat who was also the chairman of the Palestine Liberation Organization, PLO, to inquire if the PLO was involved in the hijacking. Yasser Arafat not only disowned the hijacking, but also sent a negotiation team to Egypt. This team included Abu Abbas, the leader of the PLF. Abu Abbas contacted the hijackers through a Cyprus radio station and instructed them to head to Egypt's Port Said and treat all passengers well. Mulchi, the leader of the hijackers, complied and directed the captain to Port Said. Upon reaching Egypt, Abu Abbas apologized to the captain and had a private conversation with the hijackers. Italy and Egypt wanted to resolve this matter without getting their hands dirty, as it was primarily an issue between Palestine and Israel. However, the U.S. insisted that the hijackers were terrorists and should not be negotiated with. Despite U.S. protests, negotiations began. Italy and Egypt wanted to hand over the hijackers to the PLO for punishment. On October 9th, Captain De Rosa publicly assured everyone via a radio message that all passengers and crew on the ship were safe. Following this message, Italy and Egypt decided to grant the hijackers safe passage. They were brought to the Achille Loro on a tugboat and then disappeared into Egypt's mainland. Everyone thought the negotiations were successful and the hijackers had withdrawn their demands. However, it was later revealed that Captain De Rosa was forced at gunpoint to broadcast that message. In reality, when the Syrian officials refused the ship entry, the hijackers had already killed a passenger, Leon Klinghoffer, who was in a wheelchair. They threw his body into the sea this news caused a sensation. The hijackers, who were thought to be free, had committed a significant crime and vanished into Egypt. Italy demanded that Egypt hand over the hijackers, but Egypt was trying to distance itself from the situation. Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak claimed the hijackers had left Egypt, and he didn't know their whereabouts. However, U.S. intelligence learned that Egypt was planning to fly them to Tunisia, where they would be taken into custody by PLO representatives. On October 10th, at 6 p.m., a civilian aircraft was scheduled to leave Egypt's Almaza Air Base for Tunisia, carrying the hijackers. Neither the hijackers, Italy, nor Egypt knew that the U.S. Crisis Management Team planned to intercept the plane in midair. Four F-14 fighters, two KA-6D air tankers, and two E-2C radar planes started patrolling over the Mediterranean. As soon as the hijackers' plane took off, U.S. fighter jets were alerted and began following it. After 1.5 hours in the air and not receiving permission to land in Tunisia, F-14 aircraft surrounded the plane and instructed the pilot to land at Siganella Air Base in Italy. 
The pilot tried to contact the Egyptian airbase, but the E-2C radar planes had already jammed his radio signals. With no contact with Egypt, the pilot had no choice but to turn the plane towards Sicily. The plane landed at Siganella Air Base at 12.10 a.m. on October 11th. This operation was unknown to many. Italy only learned about it when the plane was about to land at Siganella Air Base. Since the plane landed in Italy, the ship was hijacked in Italian waters, and the murder also occurred on an Italian ship. Italy had the first right to take custody. However, the U.S. also wanted custody. The plane was surrounded by 80 U.S. commandos and then by 300 Italian commandos. After hours of Italian and U.S. diplomatic meetings, a call came from Washington instructing the American soldiers to stand down. Italy and the U.S. reached an agreement on the condition that Italy would prosecute the hijackers. Italian troops found four hijackers and another important person on the plane, PLF leader Abu Abbas, sent by Yasser Arafat. It was speculated that Abu Abbas planned the hijacking, but there was no confirmation if Yasser Arafat was aware of it. Due to a lack of evidence connecting them to the hijacking, Italy released Abu Abbas while the hijackers were tried and sentenced. Al Molki, who killed Klinghoffer, received a 30-year sentence, while the other three received sentences ranging from 15 to 25 years. It was later revealed that their intention was not to hijack the ship, but to use the cruise ship to attack Israel's port of Ashdod. This decision was a response to recent Israeli bombings. Leon Klinghoffer's body was recovered off the Syrian coast on October 13th, five days later, and was sent back to his home country after an autopsy. This incident is a significant historical event involving multiple nations and international politics.